In the last episode, we discussed neutron stars. These are objects that are so dense that the electrons and protons within their matter has been crushed into neutrons. These objects are more massive than the sun, and yet they have a diameter of only 10 kilometers. At that diameter, the gravitational field is so intense that normal matter is crushed within nanoseconds. The gravity tries to pull the neutron star in on itself, but the neutron star pushes back with the degeneracy pressure of its neutrons. But degeneracy pressure has limits. And if that neutron star was too massive, or if it gained mass from some companion star, then it might exceed that limit. And if that limit is breached, then nothing we know can resist the intense gravitational force and the neutron star will collapse and collapse and collapse into where we don't know what it would collapse into. Yeah, we don't know. You see, the math tells us that the matter of the neutron star will continue to collapse without end, collapsing down into a point of zero diameter, infinite density, and having the mass of the star. And that's just a little hard to believe. Fortunately, something else happens that makes that issue sort of moot. As the neutron star collapses, it passes through a boundary which effectively removes the object from our universe. So if that point of infinite density exists, it doesn't exist here. To see why this happens, we should revise an old saying. What goes up might not come down. Now I can take this here Dilbert and I can toss it in the air. Comes back down. If I toss it faster, it'll hit the ceiling and then it'll come back down. If I toss it out side real fast, well it'll go up real high but it'll come back down. But if I could toss it fast enough, then it'd never come down. That speed is known as escape velocity. Escape velocity on the surface of the Earth is roughly 11.2 kilometers per second, or 25,000 miles per hour. To escape from the surface of the Sun requires a velocity of 617,000 meters per second, which is two-tenths of one percent of the speed of light. Sun! By cracky, you'd really have to be hauling! To escape from the surface of a neutron star, you have to be moving at 100,000 kilometers per second. That's a third the speed of light. And if that neutron star collapses, it will collapse through a radius where the escape velocity equals the speed of light. And when that happens, it disappears from our universe. Whoa, like, hold on there, Newt. I mean, like, it, it doesn't, like, disappear. I mean, it's still there, right? Well, some of its attributes remain behind, but nothing can come out from behind that boundary. No matter, no wave, no light, no information can cross that boundary on the way out. Which means we can't see into it because nothing can cross that boundary on the way out into our eyes. <laughs> well, gosh, why not? <laughs> because in order for something to pass out from behind that boundary, it would have to be traveling faster than the speed of light. Right, and so, for all intents and purposes, the object is gone. No information about the composition or behavior of what's inside that boundary can pass outside of it into the outside world. No event that occurs within the boundary can be known outside the boundary. And for these reasons, we call that boundary an event horizon. So look at it this way. Let's say you get into a rocket ship and you go right through that event horizon. Maybe you could do that. Maybe you'd find it real nice in there. 
and then maybe you'd like to come back out and tell all the rest of us how nice it was in there. But you couldn't do it. You couldn't get out, and you couldn't send any radio signals, and you couldn't send any light signals, because no matter, no light, no information can get out past that boundary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like a roach motel. <laughs> they check in, but they don't check out. <laughs> Oh, okay, but but like you said, the, the, there's some attributes left behind, right? So, so like, what are they? There are only three bits of information that survive once an object passes through its event horizon. The mass, the charge, and the angular momentum. Yeah, that's right. When a neutron star collapses behind its event horizon, the gravitational field remains. Any object that had been orbiting the neutron star before the collapse would just continue orbiting as usual as though the object were still there. And the same is true for electric charge. If a neutron star had somehow picked up an electric charge from somewhere and were attracting other charged bodies to it, then as it passed through its event horizon, that electric field would remain behind and continue to interact with those attracted objects as before. And the same is true for the angular momentum of the neutron star, though that is a bit more difficult to explain. Or then again, maybe it's not. You see, general relativity throws a bit of a monkey wrench into all of these discussions. Remember that time slows as you move into a gravity field. At the event horizon, time stops. And so from our point of view, matter falling in begins to behave slower and slower and slower and slower. It actually never quite makes it to the event horizon. It just keeps on slowing down and slowing down. Now the light from that matter tries to get out. And it still can because it hasn't quite gotten to the event horizon. But now it's orbiting around that black hole and it takes trillions of orbits to spiral its way out. And as it's doing that, the light is getting stretched from uh, nanometer wavelengths to light year wavelengths and all those light rays get all tangled up. And from our point of view, it looks like something cold and random noise. And so it is that the neutron star, having breached the degenerate forces that tried to save it, dives down into a maw of its own creation, effectively swallowing itself and becoming an object from which no light, no heat, no matter, and no information can escape. It has become a black hole.